October 6, 2022, uh, Metro Stormwater Management Committee meeting. Um, we have uh, are excited today to have uh, one case. <laughs> and uh, so the first thing we need to do is take care of uh, some business, uh, routine business. So I uh, want to ask all the committee members to look over the meeting minutes and the decision letters if they haven't done so yet. And uh, we're encouraged by council to have live review of that and live deliberation, even though we get those in advance on the server. So if anyone has any edits or corrections or additions they'd like to make, uh, I think it's our tradition to uh, process all of those in one motion as uh, for both the minutes and decision letters. So not that we're in a hurry today. So. Well, Mr. Chair, I was absent last meeting, so I will recuse myself from this vote. Okay, sounds good. Interesting morning. So hopefully public television is playing some wonderful music or something right now <laughs> in, the, in the recording of this event, <laughs> entertaining our guests out there in citizen land, tracking the process of their government. It's okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess it was called uh, a big tower on a hill. <laughs> Broad, <laughs> broadcasting. That's what it was called in Jackson County, where I grew up. There's that big tower in Nashville. Uh, we were just happy to get FM radio when I was a kid. That meant the signals actually bounced a little bit, and you could you could get better. Hey, AM just kind of, I think, has a has a certain trajectory, but FM kind of bounces, so you get better reception. But uh, I remember listening to a FM station in Chicago in Jackson County when I was a kid. So I played good music. That's about all we could get. <laughs> Had a big signal. All right. Little Jimmy Dickens. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a statue to him uh, in front of the Ryman, or on the back of the Ryman, depending on what, what you call the front. Yeah, I saw Jimmy Dickens and uh, George Jones one night in concert. That was quite fascinating. The long and the short of country music. <laughs> George and George was there in traditional form, and that's all I will say about that. So. All right. We're ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the September 1 Stormwater Management Committee meeting minutes and the associated approval letters. Okay. All right. I have a motion to approve the minutes and decision letters as presented. Is there a second? All right. We have a motion to second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right. Motion passes. Okay, all right, we'll have our first applicant come up. We're going to uh, 
have an opening statement uh, by staff. First, probably be a legal statement so you understand your rights of appeal. If uh, if the decision is not acceptable to you at the end of today's deliberations, um, we'll have. Uh, a description of the case read by staff then we'll have you present for about 10 minutes uh, I'll give you like a two minute or one minute kind of signal if you're getting close uh, and then we'll uh, open up uh, for a public hearing for anyone that wants to speak in favor or against we'll review emails phone calls banners hung on buildings around downtown uh, about any kind of public comment or public interest and then we'll close the public hearing and then we'll start deliberating as a committee so does that sound okay all right mr bowman thank you sir Opening statement to the applicant. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Case number one on the agenda is case 2022-00015, Nashville Zoo Roller Coaster at 3777 Nolensville Pike. APN is 1333-00000400. Inspector is Kenneth Tranter, Council District 26, Courtney Johnston. Applicants request disturbance of the Zone 1 buffer of Kathy Jo Branch to install pervious pavers, construct a snake exhibit slash restroom facility and bridge, and do minor grading. Disturbance of the Zone 2 buffer of Kathy Jo Branch to install pervious pavers and construct a concession stand to cross, to cross Kathy Jo Branch with a bridge not within 15 degrees of perpendicular and modified buffer signage is necessary. Appellant is Metro Government uh, Grassmere, represented by Steve Casey, Civil and Environmental Consultants Incorporated. Comments, stormwater staff, proposed mitigation appears to balance buffer disturbance. Code said no comment provided. Planning deferred to stormwater management committee and greenways deferred to stormwater management committee. Okay, if you'd like to start and by introducing yourselves and a little bit about your expertise, I'll start the clock after you do that when you're ready to summarize your proposal. Here we go. Should I start over? Okay. Wouldn't hurt to do that for the record. Okay. Uh, my name is Steve Casey. Uh, I'm a civil engineer with Civil and Environmental Consultants and have been in the water resources field for many years, um, working on a variety of ecological uplift type projects and including the, the Nashville Zoo, uh, which you'll hear about briefly today, a project several years ago to do invasive plant removal and uh, prevent erosion that was causing a lot of silt getting into the stream uh, that is uh, now not doing that. Um, I've got Drew Stokes with me as well. He's a civil engineer uh, at CEC with me um, who helped develop these plans. We worked together on that. And then Rick Schwartz, the president of the Nashville Zoo, who could not be here today, has sent a letter in his um, uh, place. So I plan to read that at the beginning of the presentation. Okay. All right. Here, here Good. you may proceed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, dear Metro Stormwater Committee members, I sincerely apologize. I am unable to attend this variance meeting. I am in the Peruvian Amazon in Iquitos, which, you know, you can pass these out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I meant to pass these out earlier. 
Is, is that a is that a two page letter by chance? It is. Okay. Would you prefer to just? I, I think we can read okay. it. Okay. And, and and I also know from experience of having I've heard his testimony in the past that okay, um, it's really helpful to learn about the zoo, but it's not really relevant to understood if it's not directly related. To I understand. The <laughs> I understand. Yeah, it's nice to know about the economic benefit of the zoo and the visitors, right. but it's okay. We can't make a judgment based upon that information. Understood. All right, thank understood. You. You're welcome. I very much appreciate. It. Yeah, he really did not want to miss this. Um, I, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay. Uh, what I can do, is I've got a brief PowerPoint presentation. Would you like me to just run through that then? Okay. Can you? Yeah, thank you. So very briefly, I've already passed out the letter. Um, I wanted to give an overview of the location, um, show you some of the photos of the existing buffer, uh, a summary of the impacts, proposed mitigation, and I'll show you, if we have time, a few of the concept pictures. Um, so. so here is where the project is. Uh, the proposed roller coaster area, snake exhibit area, is off the visitor map, if you will, um, over in the north uh, west corner of the property. The proposed off-site or off-project mitigation area for the buffer is near the critter encounters area. You can go ahead. So here that is shown on an aerial uh, where you have up there in the northwest corner the roller coaster snake exhibit proposed area and uh, the critter encounters there towards uh, to the east of that. That's just a zoomed in area. Um, so here are pictures of the buffer currently at the snake exhibit roller coaster area. You can advance. Um, this spring, just uh, for reference, originates, or this stream rather, originates at a spring on the zoo's property, just upstream of here. Uh, this is a picture, these next three pictures show the critter encounters uh, area the current state of the buffer. Uh, there is some existing bamboo there as I um, showed in the application. That's plans to stay, but to be controlled. Um, and then a, there's a third picture there. It's just showing the, this is the right, uh, or sorry, the left ascending bank. Both banks here uh, will be uh, restored. And so here's just a summary of the buffer impacts that's contained in the application. Uh, just zoomed in to show uh, how the orientation of the bridge has to be in order to accommodate the queuing area for the exhibit. And this is the proposed mitigation uh, at the project site uh, that shows the 50-50 mixture of both canopy and understory Tennessee native trees. There's gonna be a mixture as well of two inch caliber and one year saplings spaced about seven and a half feet on center. Um, and I, you can advance. This is the offsite area uh, near the critter encounters. Both of these locations will have educational signage uh, and just explaining what's going on, um, which will also help to ensure the continued uh, maintenance of these areas uh, because of the signage there. And here are just some conceptual photos uh, of what the area may uh, look like. This was developed early on in the project planning. Uh, the covered bridge there you can see uh, at the forefront and then the roller coaster behind. And these are just some uh, pictures uh, of what it may look like as well on the bridge walking across and into that area. Uh, obviously what's missing are a lot of trees. And that is it. Okay. All right, so at this time, uh, we'll uh, open up the public hearing for any members of the public that might want to uh, speak in favor or against the current proposal. See anyone here that would like to do that? Okay, so if you'll come up to the mic and uh, introduce yourself, give us your, uh, your address in Davis County or wherever. We generally give uh, public commenters two minutes, so. Okay, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Virginia Smith. My address is 533 Inwood Drive. Is, 
push the button there at the bottom of the mic. There you go. All right, thank you. I'm Virginia Smith. Uh, my address is 533 Inwood Drive. Uh, I know nothing about storm waters. I just got this letter. I just was curious uh, because of the we have had flooding. If this has any impact on the neighborhood south of the zoo, I have no idea what I'm storm water is. So that's all my question. All right, thank you. <laughs> we'll we will get to that after we get the rest of the comments. If that's okay. Thank you for coming. Would somebody mind switching off that mic there? Thank you, Dr. Camp. That's all right. We're, we're, we do the same thing every week, if you, as you probably noticed. Okay. Anybody else want to comment? For or against? Okay. All right. Do we have any, any other letters? One page, two page, ten page? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I did have a, another neighbor kind of reach out and okay. ask some questions. Okay. Um, but otherwise, they were, you know, they didn't really have any issues as far as I could tell. All right. Okay. So uh, we'll close the public hearing um, and we'll open it up for committee debate at this point. Uh, just to get directly back to your question, um, uh, mitigation typically is designed to offset um, aspects of the filtering water quality benefits of the buffer. Um, there should also be some correlative uh, increased sponginess as a result of adding additional uh, vegetation to a site to offset hardening of a site. Uh, but it's really up to the applicant to quantify that for us and to assure us that that's happening. Um, that's a very reasonable concern to have. It's it's uh, it's why these buffers exist, uh, both for water quality and for water quantity. Um, and um, the floodplains associated with them do help reduce flooding downstream if they're not hardened or developed. Um, but of course, the floodplains extend much further than our jurisdiction, you know, with the buffer. So uh, protecting these buffers uh, either by not allowing more hardening or development or by having very um, thorough mitigation is pretty important. So does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Reasonably so. You're probably waiting for the numbers just like we are. So. <laughs> All right. So would you like to address the question of uh, how your mitigation is going to address um, um, the hardening of the site? Sure. Yeah, one of the ways is the queuing area will be permeable, uh, permeable pavement or per permeable pavers rather, uh, which this, the gravel storage beneath that will function as underground detention of stormwater uh, from the hardened surface. Um, and that will be able to be uh, released into the buffer area through a kind of a slow release type uh, scenario similar to um, uh, currently out there, there are these flow control berms, about two foot high soil berms that have sections that are pervious. They have a rock core, allow water to seep through slowly. That's the project that was done several years ago that improved the substrate of Kathy Joe Branch. Similarly, this uh, the queuing area will have a kind of a gravel uh, storage that will seep out into the buffer. Um, additionally, we will retain or uh, get some detention benefits from the bioretention area that's being proposed uh, there as well. Um, so I think uh, those two, plus as you mentioned, all the trees that are being planted in the buffer itself will all help to mitigate that. And we, we are being bound by the Metro stormwater regulations as well and have a pending uh, application with them. How much of the pervious paving uh, will be in the zone one or the zone two that's that's uh, already currently vegetated? Are we, will we be adding additional pervious areas that are, that are outside of a vegetated buffer or inside of a non-vegetated buffer? Um, can you, I, I'm not sure I followed the question exactly. I, I, I guess what I'm looking for is kind of a, a mass balance gain, a net gain of perviousness. So do you have any idea for, you know, how much net gain we might get out of, uh, because a, a lot of your mitigation appears to be within the existing buffer. 
<laughs> within the, the existing zone yes, one and zone so, two. So yeah. right, we are planting yeah. trees in the existing buffer. Okay, that's so, correct. So you're enhancing the current buffer, which could make it more spongy and yes. more healthy. Um, but if you're adding hardening, ideally, what we would benefit most from would be a uh, an unvegetated buffer being revegetated. Or, oh, I see. Or a, 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 um, an area adjacent to the buffer being made more pervious because, you know, frankly, the unsaturated zone of soil is going to be thicker, mm -hmm. further away from the buffer, further away from the water table. Right. So you're going to get more storage, more detention and retention, actually more retention mm -hmm. in those sites. So we're really generally looking for a net gain. So can you quantify that at all based on what you're presenting? Well, what I can say that the current area that the project is being proposed is pervious. Um, you know, there's not impervious that we are able to remove other than a small wooden bridge that's there now. So this bridge going over is actually replacing that. Correct. Replacing a current bridge. It's replacing okay. a current bridge so that's that not in a little bit, yeah. good enough repair to okay. be adequate okay. for the uh, purpose. Okay. Uh, in terms of your uh, directly answering your question, the buffer areas that are being proposed currently have a lot of invasive uh, plant material in them. And part of the issue with that is it shades out the vegetation at the ground level and thereby leads to erosion uh, that you can always can't see. And that's exactly what we dealt with in 2015 at the zoo. When we, that just to paint a little bit bigger picture, there's a, over 100 acres that drains to the detention basin just upstream of where this proposed project is that is not zoo runoff, it's offsite. And the energy of the water coming out of that detention basin traveling through the riparian area to Kathy Jo Branch was why the project was done back in 2015, because erosion was happening under the surface. You couldn't see it because of all the privet and honeysuckle. So there was a lot of invasive plant removal done there. The flow control berms were installed. That same thing is being proposed as part of this project to keep that good benefit, that good technology, um, and mitigate for what's being added in terms of hardness through the bioretention area, the underground detention. Um, and, and I believe with the addition of the trees, in addition to all of that, that I'm not sure we're getting a net increase, but I, what we're hoping to do is keep it, make it no worse so by no net loss. No net fair? loss, exactly. Okay. But with the off-site area near the critter encounters, that's an area that's currently not well vegetated in terms of, you know, riparian buffer. Mm -hmm. There's uh, grasses and things with very little trees on the left descending bank. On the right descending bank, there's just a mixture of all sorts of things. Um, but I think that that area in particular will have uh, a really nice uplift in terms of uh, native vegetation and ability to deal with the stormwater runoff from the critter encounters area and the walkway for the zoo uh, in that area there. So um, I don't know if that answers your question fully or not, but yeah, I think okay. it does. All right. Anybody else? Well, so then you have an off-site, you have an additional mitigation as well. Is that an area you've worked that, in as well? Yeah, that's the Critter Encounters area. It's it's just another area of the okay, zoo. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to follow her. Yeah. Yeah, can you go back to the slide that shows overall, sorry, it's just a little low. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so is this what you're speaking about? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's the zoomed in. If you've been to the zoo um, and you've been to the Unseen World near Croft Pond, you're familiar with that? No, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'll just refer to the picture there. I, we normally don't get to have this much fun, so gotcha. taking, taking advantage of the opportunity. <laughs> I understand. So, yeah, so... <laughs> 
the, the area to the left is the area where the project is being proposed. Um, that's an off exhibit area. Um, and so the area to the right that I'm pointing to in that picture is the what I'm calling the off site or off project area. Yeah. They're both right on Kathy Joe Branch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we tend to, I think, um, our chair was trying to get to the point of with this roller coaster, um, I'm looking at the plans, which are a few slides down, I think. You have like the roller coaster station, which I assume is going to be concrete or it's going to be impervious area, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And then there's concessions and restrooms being added. I know, you know you're replacing a bridge, which is not really a change in like impervious area or pervious. Um, but I think what would be beneficial for us is how much impervious area is being added that would lead to more runoff and then what is the amount of you know impervious area that you've spoken about right. and then looking at kind of the is the impervious area being added what is that in terms of square footage or acreage mm. and those things and then how is that being offset understood so if it could be really quantified i think that'd be beneficial because it's not well you say there's no net gain or loss the reality is there's impervious area being added to an undeveloped yes. portion of the site yes. and it would be beneficial for us i think to know how much impervious area is being put on the site and how that's being mitigated and offset with okay. impervious area and plantings and those things. Okay. That is something I don't have a square footage available to me this minute. It's part of our grading permit application that is in the queue. Um, and so it shows that we are mitigating for that in terms of the bioretention detention benefit as well as the underground detention. So there is a net increase in impervious area. However, I will say we we tried our best to take advantage of pervious practices where we could. Uh, for example, the hammerhead that needed to be there for fire access is planned to be pervious, uh, as well as the queuing area is going to be pervious permeable pavers. Uh, certainly with the roller coaster building itself, that had to be impervious. Um, the roof for the snake exhibit restroom building and the roof for the concessions building, we th those were impervious. So those are the per impervious areas, if you will, but they're being mitigated by both detention as well as water quality uh, practices in accordance with Metro's requirements. Uh, so there's no net increase in terms of runoff uh, because of those things. Okay. Something we also typically like to see is when you are encroaching on buffer, like how much of that buffer is being encroached upon in terms of acres so mm -hmm. that we have an idea of like... Yeah, we okay, have that. I didn't zoom in far enough, possibly. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I see Could that. You? But it's sometimes nice to just have all of those numbers kind of pulled together so we yeah, can I've, do Yeah, I've got a slide in there of that. Yeah, if, if I could chime in for a second, I've got what, you know, obviously the, they're here for the encroachments and the buffers and everything else is going to be per code. So it, it's what's important that jumped out at me is there's 200 square feet of roof in the zone one buffer for the restrooms. And then there's a, uh, really the biggest encroachment is the bridge. It's a replacement bridge. Um, there's also a slight encroachment in the zone two for the concession stand. But what you got to keep in mind is you're delineating a 100-acre drainage basin. I mean, there's, there's a chance, they thought that that was the most accurate line, but there's, I mean, there's a chance it's 10 feet downstream or 10 feet the other way. I mean, there's only so much accuracy we can have with the information we have. You know, when I'm looking at the, the orientation of the bridge, it makes me wonder why it can't be more perpendicular, maybe limit it, but I'm sure that there's a lot of functionality that causes queuing and 
you know, and, and really the limited space that is occupied by the roller coaster, I know it's very hard to change that geometry. Combined with what's going on on the opposite side, you know, it, it's somewhat of a hardship just on the usable area. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you can speak a little bit to that. And I guess mm -hmm. in addition to just aligning similar to the existing bridge, mm -hmm. it, it's why move it. Um, but those are the... Those are really the couple things that, that jumped out at me. And, you know, for a second I was thinking, well, why can't we just move the restrooms a couple feet? But at the same time, there is – that that line is so hard to draw, and we're really relying on where a surveyor shot what they thought was the top of a bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we just have to go off of that. We're, you know, we can't manipulate that at all. And, it, you know, it, it – this meets the intent of all the regulations in my mind, albeit it might encroach a foot or two, because when you look at other municipalities, they go on averages, and, and you might be able to encroach a little bit as long as you have a bigger buffer somewhere else. And we've, you know, we've looked at some cases in that fashion before. So, you know, I don't, I don't think these minor encroachments are significant or detrimental to the water sources, but that's just my two cents. Would you like me to speak to the direction of the bridge and all that? Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of, and by the way, I do have that slide in here that shows the quantification. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I can get that to you, though. <laughs> um, so the direction, we, we uh, during the design development process, really wrestled with trying to get this more perpendicular. Um, the site is somewhat limited and challenging in and of itself um, because of the presence of the detention basin to the north and the stream to the south. Uh, but the site itself, as Rick's letter describes, really is essential because of its being nowhere near animals. Um, and the noise from the roller coaster is something that it can't be that close to other animals for stress reasons. So the because of that, having this access across Kathy Joe into the queuing area necessitated that orientation of the bridge. Um, and but I'll, I'll add to that that while the bridge is per is not perpendicular, it is completely spanning the stream. Um, there's going to be some concrete supports, but no, you know, no work in the stream. Um, and it, I, there's other examples of this at the entry village where the, the zoos had similar challenges with trying to cross perpendicular. But the uh, I, I think it's really the site constraints, as you alluded to. It, it was a challenging site, um, and so that's the real reason. But the reason for the site itself is, has more to do with the animals at the zoo. And a lot of that extra tree buffering will probably help with the noise as well. I know, I know it's helped it's a good point. at my house with the road next to my house, so mm -hmm. surprisingly, so I wasn't expecting that. But um, probably won't help with the kids' screams as they go down the <laughs> steep slope. But um, um, all right, what, what does everybody think about it so far? Where, where are we? Mr. I'd, Chairman, could I yes. ask one question? Yes, sir, please. Um, I recall there was an invasive control plan as part of that. Am I remembering that correctly? And if so, could you elaborate a bit on what that would be? Yeah, it's going to be similar to what was done back in 2015 where hand cutting of the vegetation will be done and then uh, spot spraying um, probably with a dyed um, chemical herbicide to know where you've been. Uh, that's, that's the plan. There's not going to be digging up roots and that sort of thing. Um, so that's, that's the plan. Um, and the, the zoo staff is familiar with that. They've done that in the past. Um, in fact, this area had planned to be a different type of exhibit, so they kept doing that for a while, um, uh, actually up until right before the pandemic, and then things kind of uh, were not maintained. So, so is the goal basically to accelerate the progression of this to a fully functioning buffer over what you have now? Yes. 
Anthony, I, I do know for years y'all been partnering with the uh, Tennessee Department of Agriculture's non-point source program. Uh, yes. Uh, you've had elephant waste management systems installed. Mm -hmm. You've had uh, worked with, I think, the Tennessee Environmental Council on invasive mm -hmm. removal. I think that was the 2015 project you referred uh, yes, to. Yes, that's right. Done a lot of buffer enhancements. Um, yeah, I, 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 we try to be flexible with public entities because they don't offer as a frequent recurring impact to buffers as everyday development does, everyday mm -hmm. common development. So we try to be a little more flexible since they don't come up quite as frequently. Uh, but it does sound like the staff feels like your mitigation is adequate. It sounds like um, you're making efforts to stick to an existing footprint of a current bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have some minor encroachments as has already been addressed. I, I guess the main thing we've just encouraged you to do is just, um, and, and, I, and I know from having heard um, Rick's presentations in the past, he seems to be as concerned with living um, conservation mm -hmm. on site as much as um, being a, an attraction. Correct. And so this buffer enhancement um, is pretty critical to your all's mission. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty critical to telling the public that habitat matters mm -hmm. even in a urban attraction like this. Absolutely. And so by doing this extra mitigation, it's pretty key. I, I know in the past we approved another minor zone one encroachment because it had adequate mitigation. Mm -hmm. I think there was a historic site of some type involved with that as well. I, that's been like 10 or 12 years ago, I think, when we heard that case. But um, um, so that, that I, I, I just want to emphasize that it's really important you all follow through, mm -hmm. you know, with in continuous improvement of the buffers mm -hmm. as a leader for conservation in the community as well. So. Yeah, and I'll just add to that, Dale McGinnity at the zoo has been working with the hellbender salamander for years um, and has done a lot of conservation type practices. They they've done, um, have a, a breeding program there at the zoo to try and uh, help that particular species, but this project we did in 2015, one of the impetuses for that was really to encourage the Nashville crayfish. Uh, you know, Kathy Joe Branch is in that Mill Creek watershed, but it was to encourage the health of Kathy Joe Branch to be raised to a point where that, that crayfish could even find habitat there. And so that's one of the things that um, is very forefront on the zoo's mind is the health of the water uh, and the substrate of the channel and that sort of thing for the benefit of the, uh, you know, the aquatic life uh, there as well. So. And Mr. Chairman, what you're saying, um, one thing that we are going to put in your hands, I think we've had some good faith efforts on previous projects, is instead of the the stream buffer sign, can we enhance it to be educational and maybe talk about the crayfish and talk about, you know, mm -hmm. what's in there versus just, oh, there's a 25-foot buffer. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, yes. we, we're really trying to encourage education, and obviously the zoo is highly encouraged. Yes. To, I mean, that's their platform is education, but... Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to mention that. I don't think it'd be part of a motion, but just as you finalize that detail. And I guess the other thing that makes me comfortable is they, they have staff to maintain the invasiveness, whereas a developer, I mean, mm -hmm. they gets built and it goes away. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if, if I could add one other point relating to the project he just mentioned. Our staff actually monitors that stream segment after that project to try to identify if mm -hmm. there have been any improvements improvements. And while we haven't seen the benthic scores necessarily go up, we have seen an increase in the amount of crayfish per se. So we do feel that it it, it is has been beneficial and once maybe over time the riffles can establish themselves a little bit more that it will be be beneficial. Getting all that runoff from that much imperviousness upgrading to them is a little bit of a hill to climb. But uh, so far that project has shown some initial benefits. Mr. Kabir, did you want to say something? I, I think, um, well, I think we're ready for a motion. Um, and I, I, I see this as a, also being a, 
community benefits project. I'm still benefiting from the hangman roller coaster that existed to those of you who are native Nashvilleans and I'm happy to see the zoo bring us back. And, and I know that the zoo um, has been a steward of the community and the steward of the Mill Creek watershed and the steward of the Kathy Joe Branch Creek. And to um, Commissioner Fulmer's points, I think that they've done a great job in educating the community on the importance of um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, made a great point about the educational piece of this, which I think would be a great uh, uh, community learning aspect that I'm going to roll into this motion. So, I, Mr. Chair, would like to propose a motion to approve the variance request uh, based on the mitigation that's shown with the addition of the educational signage and interpretive graphics that could be placed on the bridge or the, near the abutments to educate uh, the public as to the importance of uh, stormwater management and stream restoration. All right, I have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we have two seconds, which is better than one. <laughs> that's a strong motion. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a very strong motion. You made it that last meeting. Yeah, that's right. That means you're three votes on your way to success. So, All right, so is there any discussion on the motion that's been properly seconded twice? Can I just make a note that we often talk about hardship and that being aside from the community benefit and all of the things mentioned, um, this does represent an actual hardship given the site and the animal condition, the consideration for the needs of the animals. Um, just because, you know, when we talk about precedent, we refer back to that hardship. This is separate from the motion. Just feel like we need to also note that. All right. And there's probably lots of opinions on that, but we won't get into that today. So, <laughs> All right. So um, uh, thank you for your comment, Dr. Kim. All right. Anybody else like to make a comment or share any perspectives? All right. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you for um, thank you. coming prepared. That helps a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. I was just thinking that. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be in the back of the line. We won't be expecting any early seats or anything like that. Mr. Swartz, I'd love to see a letter about previous paving in his parking lots. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Do, what else do we have, Mr. Bowman? Um, I think that's it. We don't have any cases next month. Okay. Um, so, and we don't have any other public business or official business. I think we need to vote maybe in December for a vice chair, but. Uh, we don't need to do that today because it hadn't been publicly noticed or it hasn't been publicly okay. noticed. Okay. So. All right. So we're going to vote on a chair next month. I mean, a vice chair next month. <laughs> a chair if you want to. <laughs> yeah. 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 May, may need to have a, a, a voluntary coup, yeah, of, of, of myself. <laughs> but anyway. We do have somebody that's been appointed to carry seat. Okay, good. You want to introduce that person real quick to us? Sure. Um, her name is Kate McDonald. She works for Civil Site Design Group. Um, seems like a great fit. Uh, she's got a few years of experience on the, the private side. So um, she was appointed to council on Tuesday, and her term starts tomorrow, I believe. And I'd like to thank Commissioner Stokes for being such a great uh, participant and a great vice chair. Really appreciate you being here. So she's been here for five years. So. Wow. All right. Okay. Well, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. So moved. Is there a second? <laughs> Non-debatable motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. All aye. opposed, we're adjourned. been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.